for our 5.5 challenge, I'm going to help walk you through the problems and think about what we're setting up. You're going to see me thinking in real time, so it might be interesting. So let's go. So it says Bethany is making punch. She wants to use two cups of orange juice for every three cups of cranberry juice. So two of these, three of these make the juice. So we have orange juice. She uses two. We have cranberry juice. She uses three. So when she puts that all together, we get the total juice which is two plus three is five. So she's making five cups of juice when she combines the juices. She wants to make enough for 60 people to each get half of a cup. How many cups of orange juice will she need? How many cups of cranberry juice will she need? So if I have these five cups here, so I'm gonna draw out five cups. One, two, three, four, five. So she put them all in the pitchers, mixing it up. If she's scooping out half cups, right? There's a cup. So, but she cuts it in half. There's a cup. She cuts it in half, cuts it in half, cuts it in half, cuts it in half. So how many cups can she make or how many people, I guess, can she serve with five cups? Because each of them get half of a cup. So Really, I know we think half, oh, I've got to divide, but I'm giving each of them half. So I'm really doing five times two to see how many people we serve. So how many people can we serve? We can serve 10 people with five cups, with one recipe. So one recipe, so we've got recipes, so 10 people with one recipe. So we need to see how many recipes we need to make to feed 60 people. So we're trying to feed 60 people. So times by six times by six. So I really need to make six of these. So we need six recipes. So if I times this by six, that means I really need 30 cups. Right, because five cups fed 10 people, so 30 cups will feed 60 people. We're really just timesing it by two. We needed half as much punch as there are people every time. So now it wants to know how much orange juice and cranberry juice you can do. So if I times this by six, I just need to times each of these by six. So whatever we do to one, we just keep doing it to the other, right? We times these by six. So we need to times all of these by six to find our final answers of how much of this and how much of this. And when you're done, your orange juice and cranberry juice should add up to 30. So it's just walking through thinking about, okay, I need to go from here to people, then I need to go back to the juice. It's definitely got a couple steps to do. Okay, our next one, D pack, I guess, is making a large amount of trail mix. He uses two and a fourth cups of raisins in a single batch, which makes seven cups. If he uses, okay, so we have raisins. We're gonna, we're gonna stop right there. So we have raisins is two and a fourth. And then we have our total is seven cups. We also have other ingredients. Oops, so we need to find, well, it erased everything. So I need to find out what this other is. Two and a fourth plus what equals seven. So what is this missing piece here? Then I can just convert them over. So now if I'm using 14 and a fourth, I need to know how did I get from here to here, and then I'm just going to do the same thing from here to here. So it's just kind of a big chart that we're setting up. How did so? First, I need to know what is this missing piece. This plus this equals seven. How did I get from that piece to fourteen and a half? Do the same thing to two and a half. I'll tell you that one. 
So then on a different occasion, he is going to use 10 and a half cups of raisins. How many batches did he make? So we're coming back to what we know. So our raisins was two and a fourth. You should know what the other ingredients are. That didn't change. And then our total cups is seven for a batch. So this makes one batch here. So now he wants to do eight and a half, or ten, that did not say eight and a half. I was not even close. Now he wants to make 10 and a half. Oh, see, here's me thinking in real time. He wants to know how many batches they made. Well, this is one batch. So how do I get from here to here? That's going to tell me how many batches I made. So I actually don't need any of this other information. I just need to know to get from here to here, what did I times it by? That's how many batches you're going to make. So how many groups of two and a fourth go into two and, oh my gosh, why do I keep saying these numbers wrong? So how many batches of two and one fourth go into 10 and one eighth will tell us how many batches you can make. So, right, sometimes you just gotta think through the problem. We write down what we know. We see what information we need. Sometimes we don't need all of it. Okay, number three, Sarah is taking a test. The ratio of questions she answered correctly to the question she answered incorrectly is five to two. So we've got Sarah is, we have correct, we have incorrect. So she answered five correct and two incorrect. So that's a total of seven. Then we also have Xavier, and on that same test, he got one out of three questions incorrect. So his is kind of telling us something different. He got one out of three incorrect. So this is his total. So Xavier, so it didn't say it in the same way, so we were having to pay attention to our words. So Xavier's total was three, he got one out of three incorrect. So his incorrect was one, so find his correct. Now it wants to know if there are 42 questions on the test, so a total of 42, how many did each person get correct? So we're just finding here to here, doing the same thing to their correct ones. So you need to know Xavier's correct ones, and we're thinking, how did I get from here to here? Do the same thing to his correct ones. So it's really just a matter of paying attention to what the question is saying. This was pretty easy math. You just gotta make sure you're setting it up right and thinking about what it means. Okay, and the last one, Naomi wants to earn an 80% or better on her math test. If she estimates that she earns nine points for every three points she does not earn, will she achieve her goal? So we are trying to find, so if she gets nine points, so she earns nine, she does not earn three, that's going to be out of a total of 12. We need to know, is that 80%? So, So the easiest way to find a percent is when you know your score. If she got nine out of 12 on her test, so when she gets her test back and her teacher's written, you got nine out of 12. This is really just a division problem. So if I do nine and I divide it by 12, still nine, I'm just adding those decimals in. That's going to tell me what percent she got. So this decimal is really just a percent. So 80% as a decimal looks like that. 0 0.08, 80%. So if you got eight, 80 hundredths on a test, you really got 80%. That means you got eight out of 10 or 80 out of 100. So see what this number is. Is it bigger? or smaller than 80. So if it's smaller, she did not achieve her goal. If it's bigger, she did achieve her goal. Okay, we did it. 
those were some problems that definitely made our brains think at least they made my brain think 